Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in the Outer World 2. Going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we're going to take a look on your Radian and NVIDIA parameter. And at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that another thing uh, i want to mention is some recommendations so make sure that your uh, xmp profile is activated if you have it on your bios super important Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your cpu if you have an amd or intel also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for the, the NVIDIA app, first of all, make sure that you have the latest version of it because you will have a driver dedicated for the Outer World 2. Let's go to the graphics section. As you can see, the game is over there, but we're going to change the global setting. It's, it's better. It's going to apply to all your different game that is currently installed to your computer. So the first one is your DLSS override. I recommend to go with latest. You will always use the latest version of frame generation, rear reconstruction, and super resolution. So you don't have to wait on the developer to update their game. So you're going to use the one from NVIDIA. I don't recommend to use smooth motion. It will add the too much input lag in the game. Low latency mode, go with on. If you want to lock your FPS, this is where you're going to do it. I'm doing it because I have, uh, I'm using the G-Sync on a 240Hz monitor. And the shader cache size, uh, by default, you're going to use 5 gig. But if you have the disk space, go with 10 or even 100. If you install a lot of game, you have like more than 15 game installed on your computer. Uh, you will have more space to your shader cache size. You don't have to rebuild your shader and have some corruption or stuttering and stuff like that. So this one can help you a lot. In this system, G-Sync, if you want to activate this, this is where you're going to go. So on and use full screen and window. I'm using it on the second screen over there. Uh, after that, resolution, make sure that you're using the native resolution from your monitor and also the IS refresh rate from your monitor. After that, we're going to go to color. I like to put a little bit more digital vibrance at 55%. Uh, you're going to have more saturation to your color, so less gray. And for performance, I'm putting it at 133%. Uh, I'm getting 4 to 6% boost in my FPS. My boost clock are, are a little, little bit longer. The thing is, you need room on your GPU. So if you have already bad thermals and stuff like that, it will not change anything because N NVIDIA is using an algorithm. And if it knows that the card is already maxed out, it doesn't change anything. In my case, I can get a longer boost clock. So definitely try it out. Now let's go with the Radian settings. So now for Radian card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. 
After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluent motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one, this one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now in the game, uh, window mode, I recommend to go with full screen. Make sure that you're playing native with your resolution. Frame rate limit, if you want to limit inside of the game, you can do that. Me, I just go unlimited because I already lock my FPS with NVIDIA. Vertical sync, I'm not using it. Uh, if you're currently using G-Sync or FreeSync, you should be fine. If uh, not, then you have a tiering that uh, is uh, annoying you. Definitely activate your vertical sync. And the upscaling technique, you have a lot of different options. So first of all, if you have an RTX card, I recommend to go with DLSS. It's pretty amazing in this game. Go with quality. You can expect 10% boost in your FPS. Um, if you're playing 1440p or 4K and you need more FPS, definitely test balance. Are you using DLSS 4 here? And it's pretty amazing what it can do. So balance is still fine. It's not too blurry. So this is pretty much it. If you have a 4000 series or 5000 series NVIDIA uh, video card, you have the frame generation available. Not a huge fan of it in the game. I feel a little bit the input lag, uh, but if you're struggling, I don't know, you have a 4060 and you're playing in 4K, definitely test it out. And also make sure that you use the latency reduction method with NVIDIA Reflex and put this one at on. If you don't have an, an RTX card, go with FSR. If you have the FSR 4 available to you, go with quality mode. 
also it's pretty amazing what you can do you can also adjust your sharpness i like to use 50 percent for this one and uh, this is pretty much it and if you don't have that you will have xess a really good implementation i recommend ultra quality or quality you're gonna get less fps like seven to eight percent boost but still it's pretty amazing and also you have the frame generation available if you want to test it out but again too much input lag for me so question of preference over there I'm gonna go back to dlss uh, motion blur uh go with zero percent you don't want to use that in this game also deactivate the hardware uh, retracing it's gonna tank your fps like crazy screen effect are we going to go with lower or medium i'm not a huge fan of those light flare chromatic aberration and stuff like that also you're gonna get a nice five percent boost at low view distance i recommend to go with medium it's a good balance between uh your distance and uh the the, the way that you're gonna play the game uh, low is a little bit too short for me so medium is a good balance you can expect eight percent boost in your fps Shadow, I recommend to go with medium also. At low, the game looks too flat and uh, it's a good balance. For sure, if you're struggling to run the game, go with low. If not, just go with medium. Anti-aliasing, you, you can use low because anyway, you're going to use an upscaling technique and it doesn't apply. If, if it applies, I still recommend to go with low because anti-aliasing in this game is very blurry. So that's why I recommend to go with low. Texture, it really depends on the amount of VRAM on your GPU. So if you have 8 gig or more, go with very high, 6 gig high, 4 gig medium, less than 4 gig, go with low. Visual effect, I recommend to go with medium. You can expect 5% boost over there. Foliage, not a huge impact, honestly, on your FPS. For each bracket over there, it's like 1%. At very high, it's 3%. So that's why I recommend to go with high. Global illumination, you can definitely run this one at medium. Reflection can tank your FPS uh, like crazy, honestly, on reflecting material, uh, mirror, water, and stuff like that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it, and honestly, you're not necessarily uh, see it when you're playing the game, so that's why I recommend to go with low. And crowd density, I recommend to go with medium to stabilize your FPS. You also have a field of view option. If by default, it's 90 horizontal. If you increase it, you're gonna lose some FPS. So don't don't go too crazy with this one if you're struggling with your computer. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my The Outer World 2 uh, parameter. If you have any question about this, uh, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM, and we'll try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.